high market forces. What are the market forces, demand and supply? What are the triggers behind the demand and the supply? As you see here in this picture, this is the person who will take the order from this person. And this person, we will name him the person who will be willing and able to buy. He must be willing, so he brings the items and he is able, which means that he will pay for these items. And this is what represented the sales from the perspective of the seller. And here we name this person, the one who is buying. This is the buyer. And there are a lot of factors that affecting the buyers. So here he prefer certain items and he have certain income. So this is what represent actual unit sold, actual unit sold. And this is what we mean by the observation that we are going to use it in order to represent the relation between the price and the quantity, the price and between the price of the product and the unit demanded. When we trace all this observation and we track it, we will can write the demand relation. So the demand relation may be when the prices increases and then the units is going to be decreases. Unit demanded is going to decrease. So this is what we call it the demand relation. So let's take you in a tour in order to understand the relations between the buyers and the sellers from the perspective of each one and what's gonna happen in the market. So here we introduce the concept of the buyers and then we're going to look for the supplier. But look here how the law of demand works. So you see here in this paragraphs, you will find the relation between the price and the units. And here the curve that you can have it, this can be a curve or can be a straight line. And this is represent the importance of the product. So if that curve, as you see here, or the line is flat, this means that this product is elastic. But if the product is, let's say, for example, is completely different, and you will find here, it is steep, this means that the product is inelastic. So this is the relation between the price and the unit that you are looking to buy. So what will be the impact of the prices here? As you see, if the prices were set at two, and then it increases, so nothing changed except I change the prices. So when I change these prices, this is what we call it a movement along the demand. So when I was buying these numbers of units at the price of $2, I bought 40. And when the prices increases, I bought less number of units. But what are the reasons behind this? The main reason behind this it is the limitation of the demand. What will be the limitation? Maybe the main reason of this limitation is the income. According to my right now spot situation, my limitation is the amount of money that I'm having. And this is represent the relations between the prices and the number of units. If the product I'm going to buy, I'm not responding, not responding, responding to what we call it, to the income. So here I will say that I'm not a price sensitive. So my decision here is not affected by the income. So if the income is not taking a big issue in my consideration. So this is what we call it movement. In the case of I am price sensitive, I'm taking the income into my consideration. But if I'm not looking for the income, so I'm not a price sensitive because the relation is between the price and the units. So what can happen here? Let's say my income increases. Oops, so my income increases, my demand will increase. If my income decreases, then the demand will shift it to the left. So if the effect is positive, then it will shift to the right. If it is negative, it will shift to the left. So this is the reaction. So what are the factors that behind this is that when my income increases, my preferences, my taste, uh, uh, the mood, uh, the fashion, the things, this is what affected the increase of demand. As you see here, it will shift to the right. But if it is not, it will shift to the other side, which is the left. So the shifts here, it is very important because I can have many shifts across time. But if I have an increase of demand and this increase of demand, I regulate the prices and I keep it as it is. So the number of units is going to be increases if the prices is regulated. But if it is not, this means that I'm not having the same price level. 
So in the case of regulated prices, means that the prices is constant, but here are the demand increases due to population, due to income, due to many factors. So here the prices, if it is regulated, the price will be the same, but the number of units will increase. So this is the effect of the shift of the demand. So there is an increase and there is a decrease. A decrease in the demand means a left forward to the demand curve in the opposite direction. Instead of D2, it will be D2 to D1. So this is the shifts. Or I can have another one, which is an increase as in this graph. So the demand increases, so it's shifted from D1 to D2. Maybe also I have different shifts, different factors. So whenever there is an increase in demand and the prices is regulated and it is controlled, the prices will remain the same, but my capacity to buy will increase. But what happened in the real market? We have to look for the supplier and take him into consideration. So this is the impact of the shifts and the shifts can be due to the impacts of the factors that affected in the buyers. So changes in the demand, as you are going to see here, the shifts in demand is very important because here, the changes in demand, it can be gathered in a standards better uh, terminology. What is the better? The buyers, which represent the number of the population, I, which represent the income, T, which is the taste that I'm going for, a preferences, for example, and my future expectation changes in the consumer expected to happen. And the other things, which is called the related goods, which is the complements and the substitutes for the product. So what is this substitutes and complements? A substitute is a product that can be used in the place of another. Let's say, for example, the Coke prices and the demand for the Pepsi. So here, if the Coke prices increases, people are going to demand more Pepsi and vice versa. But in the real market, we didn't find the change of one and the other does not change. Complementary products, which means that I have two products such as a peanut butter and jam, so here they are going together when the goods of this inverse relation. So here the peanut butter increases for prices, for example. So here the demand here will decrease. Let's go for the supply. And the supply means that the production, the people who are willing and able to produce. We usually will not start from zero because we will have the fixed cost. So usually we'll start from at the intercept, which is, as you see here, it is one. So the cost increases. The number of units I'm going to produce more, then the cost is going to be increases. And this is what reflect on the supply curve, which is an upward sloping, as you see here. Why? Because the supply represented the cost function. What happened if I have a supply shock? What happened when I have a supply shock, such as the COVID-19, the Ukrainian-Russian war? So here we will find there is a decrease in the, what we will have, decrease in the supply. And when we have a decrease in the supply, for sure, we usually say that there is an increase in the prices. But if I regulate the prices, mean, this means that I'm going to buy less number of units. But if I leave it to the market forces, then we are not going to have the savings. Let's put to them both of them together, the demand and the supply together. If we are going to look for the demand and the supply, the person is going and willing and able to buy in his basket, as you see here, this is what represent the point of intersection. So this is intersection. It is the relations between the producer and the buyers in the market where they are representing the point of the equilibrium where they can interact together, where the point of equilibrium represent the prices where the number of units demanded will be equal to the number of units uh, sold. So let's see the market situation if I'm not at equilibrium. So in this diagram, you will see that the prices are not set at $2, it's set at $2.5. So which is the prices above the equilibrium. So here at above the equilibrium, I was demanded for number four units, but the person who produced his supply 10 units. So here I have quantity supplied, which is more than the, more than the quantity demanded. And here I have a surplus. There is in the market 10 units supplied in the, on the shelves, but I will be able to buy only four. So the surplus will be, think about it. So to determine the surplus, the surplus, we need to look for the quantity supplied minus the quantity demanded, which will represent for me 10 minus four, which is plus six unit. I will have a surplus of six units. What else we will have on the other side if I have the other not in equilibrium and the meaning of equilibrium that the point where I have quantity demanded exactly equal to quantity supply. 
But let's see the another situation when the price is, is below the market level and it is less than the market level. So here you will see that the, the quantity demanded because the product is very cheaper here, people are demanding more. So how we can calculate the shortage? So the shortage here will be the quantity supply minus the quantity demanded. So the quantity supply is four minus the quantity demanded. People are willing and able to buy, but here the people here will not find only except four units, then there will be a shortage of six units. Maybe the people will stand in a queue in lines till the numbers of units are become available. So this is the important point for the, the meaning of the situation that we have it here. So basically, this is the important point that we have it. And let's proceed to the supply and the demand curve relation. So what's going to happen here if I have an increase in demand? And usually we ask ourselves why we will have an increase in demand. The meaning of having an increase in demand, this means that the reason of prices, so here you will see that there is a demand pull inflation. What the meaning of this? So you will see here the demand will increase if I put the two factors. And due to the increase of the demand, the people will find that the prices in the market will become higher and they are demanding more number of units. So this is the point of equilibrium due to the increase of preferences, increase in income. So this is what represent the shift of the demand curve to the right. Maybe it can be shifted to the left, but if it shifted to the left, then the prices will decrease, not increase. So this is called demand pull inflation. What are, what are the main other reasons for the increase in prices? We name it cost push inflation. So what the meaning of cost push, as we have just mentioned, supply shocks, so supply decreases. And when the supply decreases, we will have what we call the increase in price level and the number of units will be decreasing. So this is what we call it supply shock. So prices increases and the number of units here decrease. So let's see another situation where it is in the longer term, what's gonna happen if I have both of two factors going to be changing, increase in supply and demand both on the same direction. So the demand will shift the right due to income preferences on such a things and the supply also will increase. So here, if both of them increases with the same magnitude, then we will have the price level will be stable and the quantity will increase. But we usually, we do this magnitude, why? In order to determine what will be the possibility I can change to the all the situation of all the prices. But what happened if the supply, for example, shift more? So if it shift more, you will find here that you will have a lower prices. But if the supply, it shift less, you will find that the prices here will be higher, where the prices will be a higher level and will be the same level, or it can be lower level. So in all the three status, as you see here, you will find that, that we will have three possibilities of the prices, but in all terms that the quantity will increase. So usually we name this that the prices will be ambiguous, uncertain. So this is basically when they are increasing in the same situation, either increasing or decreasing both the fly and the demand. The things that I'm quite sure that are gonna happen if the prices will be ambiguous the prices will be ambiguous. And in the case of the increase of supply and demand, the prices will be ambiguous and the quantity increases. But if the supply and demand decreases, then we will have the price will be ambiguous, but the quantity will decrease. So this is the criteria for making an analysis. So let's say, for example, if I have one of the main important factors that we are living upon, let's say the Ukrainian war of the COVID-19 here. So what happened in the COVID-19? Let's say we have a surplus, a reca recover, recover after COVID. So the supply increases and the people start to buy things. The population start to increase buying the things. So here the demand will shift to the right. And here we will be finding that there will be an in need for an increase of the number of units in the market. So this is the status if I have both of them shifts together. What's gonna happen if I have another status? Let's say for example, decrease in supply and both of them, as we have mentioned, if both of them decreases, so will prices will be uncertain and the quantity will be here 
uh, decreasing. So this is in the case of both of them decrease. But what will happen if decrease of supply and increase of demand? One is decreasing and the other is increasing. Here, the things that will happen, it will be depending on the magnitude of the change. So here we will find that the quantity will be ambiguous. What do you mean by ambiguous? It can increase or decrease or remain the same. But the things that we will face when one of them change and the other change in the opposite direction, that the prices will be increasing here. And you see decrease in supply, so the applied chalk and the population increases. So here we can provide the example of the Ukrainian-Russian war. So in the case of war, let's say, for example, there will be a supply decreases and the supply decreases means that it shifts and it will shift to the left. Uh, what else here that the population want to buy and to survive and they we are going to demand more and the population is increasing in number of units and the demand will shift to the right. So here we will find that the prices will increase in the market. So what else we will see here? So we can apply the market forces as well in the labor market. So if there is a demand for a certain job here, so the demand will shift to the buy and the wages of the people will increase. And this is the meaning of the labor market. We can also apply the market forces analysis of what another things are for the interest rate or for the, the exchange rate and anything. So let's think here about what would happen here if there is an increases in a certain market for a bean of butter, if the prices of bean of butter increases and the price of jelly fell fewer firms have decided to produce, health official announced that the eating peanut butter was good for you. So things about it and the answer will be below in the comments. And thank you and wishing you uh, enjoy this video.